Hello there team. This quick video today is going to talk about an application using the new DA70 product to pull multiple Modbus RS45 devices through individual RS45 ports. We have a situation where we have a number of uh, drives that have Modbus communication cards in them. For some odd reason, we can't seem to daisy chain them together to talk to them through one Modbus uh, master. So we're going to have to set up individual Modbus 45 masters to talk to each individual drive. And so what I'm using here for this application, I'm going to try out is the DA70, the new Flex Edge product from Red Lion, which allows us to have sleds in the rack. So let me go show you a picture of what I have on my desk right here. So here's what I have currently on my desk set up here, this conglomeration of stuff. Make this full page here. Let me start off, first of all, with a couple of arrows here. Um, what we're going to do here is this screen right here is going to act as uh, drives number 101 and 102 on Modbus. This edge here is going to act as drives 103 and 104. All of that's going to come back to 45 ports here on the flex edge. And then this guy is going to take all that data and put it on Modbus TCP. And it's going to share that with this Geo9 down here as our remote display. So what I actually have here, it's, uh, I don't know if I can zoom in. Let me see here if I can zoom in on this application. So maybe if I go boom, boom, boom. So if I do like that. And I'll just slide up. Let me use my arrow tool again. So it's hard to see in this picture, but uh, there is an RS-45 port here and another RS-45 port here. Both of these cables, this one right here that's coming down here, is plugging into this port on the G, on the 7-inch uh, HMI right here. That's a Modbus 45 slave port. And then this port right here is coming over, and it's connecting into this cable right here. That's that one there. That's going to be drives 101 and 102. And then on the same edge right here, there's a flex, a uh, sled. They call them sleds now in this new product. And right here is a two port or a two RS45 port sled. And one of these cables comes over and goes to this connector right here. And the other port goes to this RS45 com. We'll go to the other one here. And then this connector right here is this green cable right here that goes over to Ethernet switch that's going to be Modbus TCP. So that's what we have there. Let me see if I can zoom in on a couple other pictures here. So there's another picture of that. Here's the sleds. So there's two RS-45 ports here and a couple additional ones right here. And you can see a little better in this picture. There's the sled. There's 45 ports there as well. And then here's the two RS-45 ports on the Edge product, which is an awesome product from Redline. Rock solid. Great design. It's a, I just love that product. Uh, also, it's got two Ethernet ports. Anyway, uh, and then on the, the CR3000 HMI, on the bottom here, we have one 45 port over here and one over here. I'm just taking a screenshot picture showing the LEDs on there. Eventually, I'll show you the videos. And so this is the goal. We want to get all that data back to this HMI here. So let me close that down, and let's go look at the application. So let's start off first off talking about our different uh, slaves out there that are going to act as Modbus drives. So here I have the CR3000 screen. Just show you quickly what I've done here, team, is over here in communications on this guy. You're going to see here that I've got, uh, let me make this bigger so you can see it. This one's going to mimic a, a drive, so I've got it set up as a Modbus slave right here, uh, comm settings, what have you. And then this is drive 101. So if I look right here, see right here, I got the device set to 101. If I go down to this other port, there's device 102. And then I'm also underneath here, since these are slave devices, I'm going to mimic the amps drive. That's what we're trying to monitor here is the amperage usage of these drives. So we're going to mimic that through uh, this program. And that's what I have running here. And then if I go look at the edge, which is going to be pretending to be drives number 103 and 104, same thing here. I'll go back to communications. Look here, uh, make this a little bigger so you can see it. So on the RS-45 port COM A, 
I got it set up as device number 103. There's the drive. And if I go to port B, there's 104 and there's the drive there. Same exact thing. No big deal there. Then all that data is coming back to the new DA70 device. So that product, uh, just so you, it looks like this. If you go file new, if you're running the latest build of Crimson 3.1, you can now interact with it. And this is what the DA70 looks like. It's nice because you can add up to three sleds on the side, and you can add IO cards as well. So this is what I have on the table. And on this particular unit team, if I go over here to the left and click communications, I'm going to slide this down. You can shrink all this other stuff down for now. And if I drive, if I come down here to comms sleds down here, you can see I've got a Wi Fi in slot one. And then in number two, I've got the dual RS45 port. So this particular guy right here uh, is acting as a couple masters. And then also built in to the DA70s, you have COM ports as well. So up here on the built in 45 ports, I've got one of them set up as a Modbus master right here. And it's going to look at Derive 101. So if you look right here, there's that drive number. And then if I go down to the other master, it's going to look at drive number 102. And then if I come down to the sleds, here's the sled with the dual RS45 port. Just so you know, if you hit the pick button, that'll show you the current cards that are available right now as we start to come out with this new product. So these are the new cards that are available. And so if I click on the first COM45 port, I've got here drive 103. And if I go down to this one, here's drive 104. Okay. So this device, the DA70, is going to be taking all that data and concentrating it. And then my goal is then to share that with another HMI as a Modbus Communications as a slave. So up here under Ethernet, I've got up a Modbus TCP driver. And then under here, well, look at one thing I've done here. You see slave 70. So where did I get that number? Well, if I click on the network tab right here, the IP address of the DA70 happens to be 192.168.1.70. So that's where my slave number 70 is coming into play. So I just made that a label right here. And then because I want to share those amperage readings, if I expand this, I've got a gateway block. And under the gateway block, all I'm doing here is taking the tags called amps drive 101 through 104, and I'm going to share in these registers right here. So that's what's happening for that guy. And then over at the, uh, the main HMI then, which is the GO9 where I want the graphics, this is where I have that coming in. If I go to communications here, all this guy, all this guy is doing, it's set up as a Modbus master, and it's going to be pulling the DA70. Notice there's that number. This is just a label. But over here, this is the actual IP address of the edge. So that's what I'm trying to get. And then if I go to data tags over here, what I've done is I've created some folders and I've got a tag here called amps. I'm mapping it to the register there. Uh, I've done some things under formatting, nothing too special there. I've also done some things under coloring. That's going to be kind of cool to look at. Uh, so anyway, that's what I've got going on. And then this is the display page. And so let me show you first off. A video hopefully of what this looks like when I start it up. So I got everything turned off right now. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this whole thing on. Let's see what happens. Here we go. I know it's right. Sorry. But at this juncture, everything has come alive and everything is communicating. You can see the RS-45 ports blinking away. Uh, here we are looking at the ones on the 7-inch screen. There's derived 1 and 2. And then that's an Ethernet port right there on the GO9. And there's the screen for that showing. So everything at this point is rock and rolling live data. Okay, so uh, let me go show you a little further here. I think I have another video here. Uh, is this, I don't think this is a video. It's a picture. 
So here's what the 485 ports look like on the uh, G07. So when you're testing this, you should get red and green blinky blinky. That's what we're seeing right there. And if I go to the other video, I'm going to show you what they look like here at the edge. You can see there, that's good, 45 communications, both red and green blinking. And then this is what the uh, LEDs look like on the edge when you got communications. Of course, my internet speed to the video is slowed down a little bit. I don't know why it's stagged. It's, anyway, so the, all those ports are working pretty good. They're pretty sweet, really. All right, so let me go back to there. Okay, so let's look at this live now. So if I go to, uh, well, let's look here at the main. I got the web page up and running here, the Geo9. And you can see there's no data coming in right now because at all the devices, when I cycled power, here's what the data concentrator, the DA70, seen. But if I go to the drives, here's drives one and two. Right now, I'm not really putting out any value here. So if I just kick this up a little bit, put in a number, and I'll maybe click on this one. I'm simulating. Now, if I go back to the main screen, look, I can see I got some amperage coming in from those two guys. And if I happen to go to the other two, let me move this guy over here so you can see it in the background. So this is drives three and four. Look, 103, 104. And if I just go ahead and randomly put a number here, look, it's already changing, working perfect. Okay. So those are the devices. And if I go to the data concentrator, Look, you can see those same numbers rocking, rolling right there. And then if I go back here to the actual uh, final unit here, I've thrown in a couple other bells and whistles here. I put some limits in here. So you see these arrows right here? Well, if I click the limits page, I can actually adjust what I think should be a limit. So if I go above, say, the yellow line here, I'm sorry, if I go above the mid value, let's change this to number five, for instance. Notice the arrow drop down, if you saw that. And let's say I change this one to 7.5. So if I put in 7.5, watch what happens with this arrow. Hit enter, here we go, one, two, three, bam. Change right now. And then if I go to one of the other drives, you can adjust any of these. So maybe this one should go to six. Enter, can't really see the background because the way it pops up. This one here is going to seven, that's fine. And this one here, so the beauty here is if this value goes above this number to here, it's going to turn yellow. And if it goes above here, it's going to turn red, which is easier to see than just a number here in a screen. You can tell right away, hey, this guy's above the set point. So if you look at this guy's tinkering right around seven here. So I wonder, let's do this. Uh, um, let's see if I go 7.03, for instance. Let's see what happens. Okay. So I'm trying to get it to where it flips just because it's right teetering on that border. So that's why you're seeing it going between yellow and, uh, I'm sorry, between yellow and red. That's why it's doing it, which is pretty cool. Of course, so let's get rid of that and make that more common. There. All right. So uh, you can kind of see how that works. And if I want to change this guy to maybe eight and this one here maybe to six, we get it instantly. We get green. Perfect. All right. And then one more thing I've done here. Besides this raw data here, I'm also taking advantage of the data logger. So if I click on the word trends over here on the left, I can actually look at a live trend view of those values. So if I tab out here, we can actually see when I turned it on and when I've been playing with the values here on this screen. You can go all the way into down to a 30 second resolution, or you can tab all the way out to two days or 48 hours of continuous information here. And so the beauty to this as well is that you can click anywhere on here, and at that moment in time, it'll show you what the error is, or what, not the error, what the values are at that moment right here, and then you can click back to live, and you can let it uh, rock and roll from there. Uh, yeah. I noticed the date's off. It's actually March 13th, Friday the 13th, and this thing is saying uh, February 6th, so uh, 2010, I guess. So watch this. I'm going to quickly fix that because that bugs me a little bit. So if I go to this program and simply hit link and send time, bada bing, that should have updated the time. And if we go back to this guy, yes, perfect. Now it's going to start a fresh new log with the current times on here as well. And if I hit the red X, I can go back to the main window right there. And just for giggle, since we're playing here with this, right, let's go back to one of these. Let's just change these a little bit here. Get some other numbers kind of 
playing around here, if you will. And how about this guy? Maybe I can tweak this one as well. I should make these a little bigger. That way it's uh, easier to change because it's all the web. But anyway. All right. So now if I go back to here, we got our numbers here. If I hit the trends, you can see that there's some dramatic jump up and down here on the trend viewer here as we were changing those particular values. The other really neat thing here about this uh, is that um, on the HMI, uh, not only can you see the live data, so uh, if I go back to here, if I go back to the main window, I can actually click on the view logs here. And under the log, I only have one data log running, so I can click on log one. The way I've set this up right now is I got to re make a log once a minute. So if I create or look at the file here, let's go ahead and open save link as. I'll save this to my desktop here. It's my desktop. I'll save it as a CSV file. I don't know why Google wants to do a text. Maybe somebody from Google will call me someday and help me. I highly doubt it. Anyway, uh, I'll go ahead and open this up here. I get Apple phone calls all the time. You know, Apple. Anyway, so if you look here, here's the date, timestamp, and there's the values that are being read. I'm taking reading for this example once a second. Really easy to set up a data logger for this thing. It's really simple. So uh, that's a quick video I just wanted to show you today uh, of how we're going to use the new DA70 to take uh, individual data from drives via an RS-45 port talking to each individual drive. So I think it's a pretty cool product, the new DA70. I really like the look and feel of that thing. Um, and so that's what we're doing here. And this is kind of, again, what's on my desk. And so there you can see that's the DA70. It's a really cool product because you can add IO cards and you have all these communication capabilities. So it's really nice. Yeah, there's the edge, some pictures, screenshots, yep, so forth. Anyway, uh, that's a quick video. Uh, if you got any questions, team, uh, feel free to uh, post them. If you're interested in getting a copy of these databases or anything, I most certainly will share them with you if you send me your email address. I have no quorums of uh, sharing you these Crimson 3.1 databases. Thanks a lot. Have a great day.